PC prices have now launched on fittrading.co.uk. You guys asked for them, we have given them to you. Over 660 PC prices for special cards, gold cards, all that sort of stuff over on fittrading.co.uk. A tier one subscription which includes silvers, icons and special cards for Xbox and PS is £10 a month. And a tier two subscription is live filters. We have the buying and selling prices for nearly 1,300 special cards, 300 icons and every single profitable uh, silver card filter on this game. For tier two, you also get access to the live filters feature, which is one of our most popular. And my trade storage, which is a custom built storage platform for you guys to store the trades you've made and see your profit in real time. So check out fittrading.co.uk. But for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below. Clicking the like button, it's all massively appreciated. Um, I'm currently recording this live on Twitch, so if you want to get involved, click the link down below. Come over to Twitch and get involved in one of the fastest growing FIFA communities over there. Uh, a lot of people have been commenting me recently on these videos, asking about a Discord server. Uh, as you know, that me and myself, that me and myself, me and myself, me and Dan, V273, we own FootTrading.co.uk. We have set up, well, we have, have my Discord, we've now merged that into, into one for the website. So if you click the, if you go click the link down below, Come over to Twitch and just type in exclamation mark Discord. You'll be able to join via that. It's completely free to join. It doesn't cost a penny. So feel free to, yeah, get involved. But this video is a massive sort of strip back and take it back. Let me take my headphones out. I'm shouting a little bit. This video is a massive sort of a step back and a take back on, um, on everything that we've been doing this year in terms of talking about trading. And something that I've noticed recently is a lot of people saying to me that I'm... Like they're not, they're no longer trading or they're no longer playing foot chance because the game's coming towards the end now. And I can't stress it enough, and I've said that a million times before, but I can't stress it enough. That to me is the wrong mentality to have. If you are the sort of person that plays FIFA consistently every single year, you play week, uh, weekend league all the time, foot champs, right now is the time to be getting better at everything. So right now is the time to be playing the game. And when you've got a lot of the hardcore playing, playing against better players that are consistently better players, that is the better time to be paying because you're going to get better at the game but specifically for trading in my opinion this is when you want to be trading on the game you want to start learning how the fifa market works because right now coins don't matter and everything's cheaper so a lot of stuff on the game is cheaper in terms of the cards you're going to be buying they're going down in value and that's nowhere more like nowhere near more important how you want to say that um than next week because next week we see batch three of summer heat and we believe it's not confirmed yet but we believe that is all the tots back into pack so the market is going to drop off massively it's when the market crashes and that's when the market crashes and the game is done um so be mindful of that when you're thinking about what you're doing on the game so for me this week i'm going to be hard trading like mad so that i can get the last one or two players to compete my end squad so this week i've been trading loads you can see it on my account again shout out to luke as well because luke's been doing bits of my account while i've been busy doing other bits and bobs but icons being bought and sold continually all the time um which is which is great but i'm using right now to work out how the market on fifa even for me because i know how to trade I'm still using right now to work out how the market on FIFA fluctuates, especially with so much content. There's so much content, it's up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm using graphs on Footbin. I'm using all those sort of things to start understanding. And so for me, let's strip this back. I want to strip it back to you guys and talk to you about how to trade on, on this game and what you guys should be looking at for now and going into FIFA 21. And there are loads of ways to trade on FIFA. Loads and loads of ways to trade on FIFA. But there are two major ways, in my opinion, that I think most people tend to trade um, within this game. The first of them is investing for what is to come. And the second is trading with what is on the game. There are other bits and bobs that people will do on this game, but they're the two sort of main trading methods. They're very wide reaching and there's a, lot of, there's a lot to do to talk about with each of them. So we'll start by talking about investing in what is to come. Now, there are lots of traders out there that do this and I'm not really one of those traders. It's never been the way that I've really traded. I do, I do dabble in it throughout the year, but I prefer the other style, which is trading on the other side of um, FIFA. But investing in what's to come essentially is, let's say, for example, you get a leak on Twitter and someone who's known for leaking, if you want good leak accounts, Donk's really good for it, Dennis Foote's really good for it. They'll say, for example, we're going to get a Sissoko, Tottenham, you know, Tottenham midfielder Sissoko SBC this week. And what you'll see is people will go out and they will buy into players that are going to link to them or they'll buy into those players specifically. So buy Sissoko because he's out of packs, because cards tend to go up out of, like, out of packs and whenever they're, you can't pack them anymore, they climb. But they'll buy the players that link to him. So they might buy a Pogba. They might buy a Lacazette. They might buy, I don't know, Davison Sanchez. We're talking about generic players in terms of it. Let's say, uh, I don't know, an Andy Robertson got leaked at some point in FIFA 20 or FIFA 21. People might buy Virgil van Dijk or Joe Gomez or Wijnaldum or Mane to link to him. People will buy, buy into links. And what happens, it tends to happen is that SBC comes out 
And those players become demanded. So let's say, for example, on the game, there are 1,000 wine albums. Obviously, there's a lot more than that. But let's say 1,000 wine albums, okay? Um, and Robertson comes out and everyone wants to link Robertson to wine album. People start taking him off the market. So if that wine album was 4,500 coins, for example, if I take off the 4,500 and then V comes along and takes off a 4,500, and then one of my mods, Higgins, we'll name my mods here, Higgins takes one off at 4,600 and then the next one's 4,700 and Josh Mallet comes up and takes that one. They come off the market quite quickly. And so the price rises and rises and rises and they go up in value. They have demand. And that's what a lot of people will do. And it is a really effective way to trade in this game. The only thing and the main thing that I don't like about it is that it can have an impact if that card doesn't drop. You can lose a lot of coins. It can be risky. We've seen aspects this year when EA have gone, okay, cool. I don't know. Party bag's dropping or the ultimate tots is dropping and everyone buys into fodder. And so you know a party bag's coming and you're thinking, right, last year it was 85 or whatever. This year it's probably going to be an 85 or 86. People buy into those. And then what happens is it doesn't come out. So suddenly everyone starts panic selling their stuff off. And it goes off, goes off, and fodder crashes in price. If you miss that sell-off, or if you're not brave enough to hold, then you lose coins. Holding is obviously going to be a better thing in the long term. But also, you don't know when that's going to come out. So if you're sitting there with, I don't know, 600,000 coins in one albums because there's a Robertson SBC coming. It doesn't drop on a Monday. You're like, okay, cool, I'll hold till Tuesday. It doesn't drop till Tuesday. It doesn't drop till Wednesday. And you're sitting there for three days with 600,000 coins tied up in a card, not making you coins, not making you money, not making you anything. That, to me, is where it's problematic, and that's why I don't really like investing into it, but it is effective. It is massively effective. For me personally, I prefer to trade with what is on the game currently. The main way that I do invest is on Thursdays, like I've shown you a million one times this year, I buy heavily into silver cards. We all know I do it now. Like, there aren't many people that buy into silvers like I do, because on Thursday, we get a lot of supply that crashes the market down, and I wait... 24, 48 hours, sell them on and make big profit. So last week I bought into 300,000 coins worth of silvers. I got 700,000 coins back and that was for about an hour and a half work. It's not hard. It's really easy. But that's when you want to, want to invest. But with the website, when Dan and I set it up, we didn't want a website that was very much like, you've got to be there to learn to trade and to be able to make coins by us putting something specifically on there at that point and you've got to buy in at that set, set point. When we built the website, we built it with being able to go into the game and trade at any time. So whether it's one o'clock in the morning, it's eight in the morning, it's 10 o'clock at night, you can go and trade. So when we talk about trading with what's on the game, we are re really see talking about trading into fluctuations. That's the most important thing. So for those of you that don't know, the FIFA transfer market fluctuates up and down all the time. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It does that daily, it does that weekly, it does that monthly, but it also does it throughout the day. So a card at 8 a.m. in the morning may be more expensive than it is at 6 p.m. And it's, it's simplistically because you've got to think, at 6pm, everyone's on the game for content drop. There's a lot more movement of cards. There are cards being put onto the market, people selling teams, people buying teams. So the market gets, sort of really just get, gets moving from about 6pm to 9pm. I'd say when, that's when the market is most active and everyone's around. Even you could probably push that earlier to maybe 5pm. And so that's why you see a lot of people trading at that time. That's why I tend to trade around 6pm because you can usually pick up the best deals. It doesn't mean you can't pick up good deals at any other time, but that's when you pick up the best deals. Now, if we look at what I've sold on my transfer, mark, on my transfer pile, we'll have a little look at it um, over the last few days. So we've got all these icons that have been listed up. These are bought into at different times, but as you can see by the prices they're selling for, they were also bought into at different times. So if you look at this Alan Shearer, there's a 6k difference in this Alan Shearer. Because the reason for this Alan Shearer is, on, for example, Friday or Saturday, Alan Shearer might be more expensive than he is on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Okay. So if I sell an Alan Shearer on a Friday, I will probably make more for him than I'm going to make for him earlier in the week. The reason being, there's no demand for Alan Shearer. Some people are... Thank you for the host, bro. Some people are on the game and doing whatever it is, but everyone builds their teams into weekend league. So Alan Shearer's got more demand on weekends. Is this a very meta card? No, not at all, but coins can still be made from it. If you look at for one, one for 111k, one for 112k. So these ones, I'm pretty sure I sold these on Saturday. They were the exact same price because I sold them pretty much the exact same time. Lampard 126, Lampard 127. So when you're listing cards up and when you're buying cards, biggest error you can ever make is to list cards at the exact same price. Make sure you, you mix it up. But just be mindful of that. The, the, the most important thing you have to understand with this market, it's, it's so vital, is it fluctuates. It's like a living organism. One minute it's up, the next minute it's down. It, it's, it's, it's living, it's breathing, it's doing whatever it wants to do based upon what we feed it. If we feed it no cards, which we tend to not do middle of the week, for example, 
it, nothing happens really. It's sort of, the, the market's quite stagnant. It will go up and down always, but the, the fluctuations aren't as high. Come weekend league, suddenly everyone's like, right, I need this card for my team, I need that card for my team, and bang, 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 bang. Suddenly it rises up. But when we're looking at buying into cards, let's talk about the effective ways that you can trade on this game right now. First one is fodder. Now, that is investing into it in the hope that you're going to see something. I don't like fodder right now as an investment. The only time I do like fodder as an investment, and you'll see that later in this week, is buying into cards that are going to be out of packs, for example, for batch three coming up, because that's going to be massive. Um, but I don't like fodder investing right now. I just think there's so much going on with the game at the moment that, yes, fodder does go up and down, but it does tend to really fluctuate, and you can really get hit hard by it. I prefer to trade with stuff that's more, more consistent. So... If you look at the website, if you go to foottrading.co.uk, there are free trading guides on there. Make sure you check those out. They are completely free. Read them. It takes a the time. They're a bit wordy, but it will help you. We, we wrote them with the, the thought process that once you read them a few times, it gets into your head, you understand it. For me, and what we put on the website was special cards and icons. That was what you put on the, on the website because there's always a demand for those cards. There's always going to be a demand for those cards and they will still get used in teams. So if you go special, let's just go, let's just go generic special for now. Um, and then I'll still get used to this, this uh, filter. When I say trade with special cards, what we're really talking about here is trading with specials that have Hunters and Shadows on them. I still find it mind-boggling that to this day, we're in a situation where people still don't know that specials and Hunters have a value and they still sell them at high prices. And that's because some people just go, hey, I'm going to list it out for whatever it's selling for, and that's it done. And that's where you can make a lot of coins because they have a huge amount of value that people just don't account for. So I'm going to use this filter. This filter is 15.35 and then 15 minutes at the bottom to refresh it. That's what you use on Xbox. You might want to narrow it down a little bit on, on, on PlayStation, but it's one of my favourites of this year and it works. We're going to flick through right to the end. It's a bit dry if you have to watch it, but it is what it is. Um, we'll go towards the end. There's a reason why I'm showing this now, by the way, as well. We'll talk about it in a second. We'll talk about time. Um, but right now, you can go to... Let's say we go to, I don't know, 45 minutes. 45 minutes in. Now, on the website, we have the buying and selling prices for every single one of these cards here. I can almost guarantee that every single selling price, the buying price for all these cards and selling prices for all these because they meet the criteria are on the site. So I ain't even got to worry about this. But if you are doing this normally and you can't afford to maybe buy it or whatnot, I'll show you the way you can sort of work it out. It isn't foolproof, but it's just to be mindful of. So we'll start by looking at someone like Van Arnholt, for example, his 81 card. I'm going to go to Footbin as I do it and then I'll bring it up and you guys need to see it. Let's go Van Arnholt, his 81 card. Do, 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 do. So, you can see this one here for 24k, right? There's one here for 24,000 coins. Keep that in your mind. If we go to desktop, and we look right now at Van Arnholt. Van Arnholt, two hours ago, make sure you check his price if you're not sure. Van Arnholt's one for 19,000 coins at the moment. So, the person that's listed at Van Arnholt has, for, to some degree, allowed for the shadow, which is good. That's good trading. But, what you're looking for here is really, realistically the price to match within about 1,000 coins. You don't want to spend more than 1,000 coins, Okay. That's the first thing to think about here. So for me, it's 5,000 coins out, so I'm not interested. However, there's more to it than that. So once you've ascertained and got a okay, K cool, it's 1,000 coins, what I would then do is I'd compare price on it and I would check the amount of shadows there are on the market of this Van Arnholt. So I'll just go flicking through and I'll have a little look and I'll go, okay, cool. There are no shadows at all at that price. So if you, if you found one that was within region of him, I'd buy him because he'd be a relatively easy sell. There aren't that many of these Van Arnholts on the market. It may thank. It's not, it's not difficult at all. And you would then relist it for what the shadow's worth. Now, shadow sold for like 9,000, 10,000 coins on the market. Allow for that pretty much. I'm not saying go and list the Van Arnold for 28,000 coins, but 24, 25,000 coins like that guy has done is good. Also, checking it is twofold as well. You might go into Footbin and go, that's a good deal. But then you might go into Van Arnold and you might search through and you might see a shadow for, I don't know, 18k, which is better value than, than the one you're about to buy. You can pick that one up and this one if you wanted to, or just that one. It also allows you to pick up more than one card because you can. I've seen people say, oh, buy into one, don't buy into too many of them nonsense. If, if, if they're not flooded with shadows or hunters, go ahead and buy them. But make sure you're sticking within that one K rule. Let's have a look at this Alan. So this Alan's impact at the moment, so he's gone down in value. This one here is 21,250. Let's have a little look. We'll flip through and check. I'm not going to lie, mate. Haribo's a So. Do, 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 do. There are... Three Allens on the market that are 20,000 or below, according to this, about 17 minutes ago. So you've got three here. You've got one at 20,000 coins, right? So his price realistically is about 20,000 coins. The thing that I would say about this is you could potentially buy that Allen and make a profit out of it. It's risky. You could potentially buy it. The only reason why I'm, I'm not a massive, massive fan 
I buy I, I stick stringently to 1000 rule is right now I'm looking at this on a Sunday and let's talk about time because this is massively important right now it is Sunday and so the market's going to be, be impacted by people selling off coins and that's something you need to to learn with trading and learn and it's it's massively massively vital for the start of FIFA 21 that's why you should start doing it now start learning now ready for FIFA 21 right now you've got the, the sell-off coming happening for weekend league so prices are going to come down so if I'm buying into cards right now, I'd use a site, but if I don't want to use a site, I want to use Footbin just to keep my mind set on how to trade. I'd be careful not to buy into anyone unless they're in and around their price. Just because you're going to get loads of Alan's come onto the market now. Alan will come on, Alan will come on, Alan will come on, and it'll bring down this price anyway. But when you are coming to sell these cards, bear in mind the price that you bought them at. And it's, that's so vital when you're going through the week. Because let's say, for example, you think, right, I've bought this Alan for 21k, and I'm going to try and sell him for shadow on top of that at 30k. You're probably not going to do that. And if he gets more supply this week and comes down in price, you're going to get burnt. So the most important thing I would always say with trading right now is just look. If you're looking at that and going, right, well, they're asking at 20,000 because the other three are, are what we call anomalies. They're three big undercuts and they're not relevant to, to his actual price. The 20,000 is more accurate. I'd be looking at and trying to get a bang on the price or a little bit above. But the most important thing again, just check it. Just go hang on. What else have you got? So he's got a shadow there for 21, which is cheaper than the one you're seeing straight away here. Keep flicking through, 25. And just get an idea. Now, this Alan's in high supply because people are using him. It's one for 17k there. Uh, people are packing him right now. He's getting packed in lots of packs. So be mindful of that when you're, when you're looking into it. But it's just the way that I would be looking at this right now. It's, it's what I would be doing. I'd be very stringent on my buys and how I do it. But it's, it's so vital you do it because you'll learn how the market fluctuates. And then what I do is, like, let's say I pick up this 9 Golan. Now, I'm not going to pick up this 9 Golan unless it's a very good deal. Which Actually, that doesn't look like a bad deal. I'm not going to lie. Let me just check 9 Golan. I think it might be a little bit high, but we'll check. So nine going at the moment is twenty three thousand, so it's not a good deal at the moment. Um, what I'm doing with these guys as well when I come to selling them, so I'm keeping an eye on what they're doing. So I might have bought this nine Golan for I don't know, let's say theoretically twenty three thousand, because that's about where he's going for at the moment. It might be a couple of undercuts here for twenty three thousand coins. If throughout the week he starts to drop off, I'm going to lower my expectations of what I'm going to sell him for because I'm not going to get burnt by the fact that he keeps coming down and down and down. I'll lower it down a little bit. So each day, if it doesn't sell, I'll take them down by maybe a thousand coins. And then let's talk about selling because that is important. When it comes to selling, the way that I sell is if I'm on the game, it's listed for an hour at a time, relisted and relisted and relisted. When I come off the game, I list it for 12 hours overnight usually. They sell better overnight, less supply, less people in the game. They make you more coins. But it's so important that you understand you are not always going to make money on every single card you buy. Vitally important you understand that. Anyone that says... They made a profit on every card they bought is lying to you or they're doing a thing called green ticking, which is essentially cheating the, uh, the game. Um, but anyone says they made profit guaranteed from legitimate trading is lying to you. We all make losses. It happens. I took a nearly 1 million coin hit on a Maldini early, early this year. Didn't hide it. I was honest and said, yep, I bought in too high. Didn't work out well for me. Um, but the, the, the hard and fast rule that I go for, if I make a profit from 80% of what I get, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I don't want to lose on those other cards. I ideally don't lose on them, but if I have to break even them because the market comes down, they're impacted by something, that's okay by me. That's okay by me. That's completely fine. I'm not too stressed about it. But the last thing to think about when it comes to looking at these cards and their prices, and you can get a massive hint, is if you go to Footbin, for example, get an idea of the trend of these cards. So if you go to the graph here, right? Get an idea of what Nine Golden has done. He's been consistent around 25,000 for most of the time. So you know the chances are, not always, that for next week, you're going to be able to get in and around... 25,000 for him, something like that, maybe a little bit more with a shadow on him. Um, but it gives you a massive giveaway. If you go and check, even, I don't know, let's go with the, that, that Lampard that I sold. Let's go to Lampard. And we'll just search Lampard up here. So I know it's 119 at the moment. I'm like, okay, cool, that's fine. So it's 119,000 coins. But what's he been selling for for the last, like, week? So let's go to last one month. We'll go to here. We'll go, okay, cool. So 121, 126, would you see me sell mine for? So I know that his price has been in and around about 120k this week, give or take, before Friday came for weekend league, and now he's starting to come down again. I know I'll get that like sort of rough, roughly sort of rough idea, rough guide of what his price is going to be by that graph. So I know, right, okay, if I see him at 100, I can probably get 115 to 120 for him minimum. If I get 115, I'm looking at about 9,000 coins profit. If I get 120, about 15,000, give or take, maybe a little less after tax, 14,000, I think exactly. Yeah, 14,000, 14,000. Um. But it's vital that you do that. It's vital that you look around and go, okay, cool. This is what my, my coins are doing. Now, if you want to save time, I'm going to be blunt. Subscribe to the site. We're giving away a copy of FIFA 21 on the site for a random subscriber. So if you've been thinking about it for ages, 
trying to use a site, get involved now. Then now's the best time to do it. You may as well, because you've got a chance of winning something half decent. Um, but it is just learn the market right now. Don't be the guy that gets left behind at the beginning of FIFA 21. Learn how the market fluctuates. Learn what it's doing. Learn how it goes up and down. That is the best way to set yourself up for FIFA 21. Because if you just go, right, well, I'm done now with FIFA, and that's it, finished, cool. You can spend two hours a day just sitting there, going over the market, buying a few players, learning what price they go to. So even if, even if you want to do it in its most primitive form, go to Lampard. Have a little look at him now and go, okay, Lampard. And do it at different times in the day. Look at what he's selling for. So it's like, whoa. Okay. Maybe haven't you? Okay. Go and buy Lampards like that. That's fine. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what my chat's like. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but go and check out Lampard and add them to your transfer targets. And just see what they sell for. So, if you add, for example, I bought those ones because they're good deals. Um, if you add them to your transfer targets, you see, okay, cool, 8 a.m. they sell for this. 12 a.m., 12 p.m., so they sell for this. 6 a.m. they sell for that. And if you're up late, check it again and go, okay, cool. So, I know yesterday Lampard was selling between 115 125k. So I know that. So if you see Lampard's on the market at 95,000 coins, you can make, I don't know, 20,000 coins. You've just seen that his price has been about 120 the whole time. So for me, I'm like, okay, cool, that's easy. Like, it's not, that's, it's easy bank. I ain't got to worry about that at all. Um, but it's just, it's just a way, in my opinion, you should be doing, doing things right now. I much prefer trading with what is on the game. It is more important to me because it's just easier. You can learn, you learn trends, you learn how the market works. Relying upon EA to drop content is never a good idea, in my opinion. Uh, but that is going to be the end of this video. Hopefully, it's helped you get an idea. This week, I'm going to be bringing out trading videos, how much I can make in X amount of time, showing you guys what I'm buying, what I'm selling, because I want to make as many coins as I can this week so that I can finish off my team and maybe buy one of those big players when the market crashes with batch two. Uh, but like I say, if you're new around here, please do subscribe down below. Click the like button. All that good stuff is massively appreciated. But for now, lads, I'm out. Peace out. I will speak to you soon.